Hi, language arts folks. Welcome to module three, um, and congratulations. You are progressing well through the course. I hope you've been learning, um, really laying a foundation about what the six language arts are, how we teach them, how we assess them. Um, and then you got to explore a little bit about um, oral language and how that is also a foundation for the other language arts. And you really thought about how the oral language started to play together with emergent literacy, right? So students' early, early experiences um, in experimenting with and learning about the language arts. In module three, we're going to focus more specifically on reading and writing, right? So the two language arts that are about written language. Um, and you're going to get to look a lot more in depth at those two very key uh, language arts that we like to teach students. Um, so a couple of things to note as you're going through the module. Um, you have two chapters in Tompkins to read uh, for this module, chapter six and chapter four. And I would actually recommend that you read chapter six first. Um, you don't have to, but that's my recommendation. Um, so you'll see chapter six is written language, reading and writing. Okay. Um, this opening vignette is really, really lovely. And I think even more important in this chapter than in some others, because chapter six isn't very long and it's not particularly hard to read. It's broken up into a lot of headings and it's clearly organized but it's really important stuff. So please take your time reading chapter six. Please try to think about um, what the information looks like, right? So you'll read a lot of words and it's easy to say, okay, sure you do that. Okay, sure you do that. But I want you to really be active in your reading and, and pause and think, okay, what does that mean? Have I seen that before? Does that make sense? Um, could I imagine what the author is talking about? And that's why I think the vignette is really important in the beginning, um, because it, it starts to paint that picture for you. So you can sort of make some connections between um, all this information you're getting about reading and writing as a process. You can sort of have that picture from that classroom in your head as you're reading the chapter. So I think that you'll find that useful. Um, and then read chapter four. It's about personal writing, so it'll sort of expand um, a sense of what kinds of writing formats we, can, we talk about when we're talking about teaching students how to write. Um, so chapter six first, it's important stuff, so read it a little bit slowly and try to connect it. Um, the vignette's important. And the vignette is also um, something that you can use for your discussion board. So you'll see the discussion board prompt like we do um, in every module, but um, I'm asking you to sort of just explore what kinds of things you might teach and how you might teach them. It's just sort of a brainstorming activity that helps you take the ideas that you have about teaching and map them onto this process of, that um, Topkins will lay out, onto a reading process or onto the writing process, or, or both. Um, and again, I think that the vignette is a good example of that. So if you need a model, if you're like, what is she talking about? Then do um, think about this vignette as an example of the kind of thing that I'm going to ask you to do and you to practice, okay? Um, so I think that's all about that. Um, because we're talking about reading and writing, I, almost couldn't decide what books to share with you today. I mean, there are so, any book really can be taught in a process and any form of writing um, can really benefit from a writing process. So it, there's nothing specific to share, um, but I wanted you just to, to, again, get your head going a little bit. Um, part of what a reading and writing process means is that we do things to prepare students to read. We do things to support students while they read. We teach some things explicitly through the reading, um, and then we extend or apply the reading, right? So those are the general um, categories. We also encourage student response, right? So I didn't set that in particular, but we, after students read and while they read, we encourage their response, we teach some things, and then we um, extend and apply it. So if you just think about um, a gorgeous book like Jacqueline Woodson's Show Way, right? Um, tracing uh, her family history, the author's family history, um, through quilts, right? The sort of the women in her family um, from slavery um, to modern day um, to Jack and Woodson as a writer, right? The ways that family memories get uh, captured, the way that family stories get told, the ways that family uh, dreams extend across generations, right? Um, just a beautiful book. So think about what kinds of things might students need to know, want to know, or talk about, or do before they read this book to be able to really appreciate it. 
Um, and of course, it would depend where you're contextualizing it in your instruction, right? You know, are you reading it um, in connection with the social studies unit? Are you reading it in connection with the unit on memoir? Are you reading it um, at the beginning of the year as a family um, family tree activity, sort of to get to know you, community building process, right? So it, it all is, it depends, right, of course. But so we can brainstorm a whole bunch of ways that students might need to get ready to read this book. We could think about um, ways to help them navigate the difficult text in the book. We could encourage personal response with this book. We could think about um, specific things, either maybe um, social studies skills or um, poetry. It's, very, it's a very poetic book. So we could think about um, different forms of poetry that we wanted to explore within the text um, and teach like many lessons from that as a model. Um, and then we could have students create their own quilts or create their own family stories or um, research a family history of their own or someone else's, a famous person or a neighbor. I mean, there's so many things we could do. So I'm just sort of getting my brain going like that. It's just an example of how this book could fit into that kind of a process. Okay. Um, if you know this book, Miss Rumpheus, sort of an oldie but goodie, um, definitely has some geography and science connections if you want it to tie it in that way. It's also just a beautiful story of a woman um, who takes some time to make her the area around her more beautiful, right? And um, really connected to the land. So thinking about, again, what, how do you want to frame this book in the beginning? How do you want to support students as they read it? Um, how do you want students to respond to it? How do you want students to um, learn something specific about literature, about science, um, from the text, if you do, and then how might students apply those kinds of things, right? Um, we can also think about that in terms of um, maybe a more writing-focused unit, right? A writing process. Perhaps students are writing their own fairy tales, right? Um, which means they would have to think about character and setting and um, plot structure and um, maybe the, maybe there's a moral, right? Maybe they're doing fables or that sort of thing. Um, so think about how texts like um, The Stinky Cheese Man fairly... Um, other Fairly Stupid Tales by John Cheska, who you actually saw in a video in Module 1. He talked about how fun reading is, and he showed him his office. That's, he's the author of this book. Um, or a book like Kate and the Beanstalk, right? A sort of uh, fractured fairy tale or a changed um, fairy tale. Or even some multicultural fairy tales um, like Lam Po Po, which is a Red Riding Hood story from China. Beautiful book. Um, so thinking about in the writing process, um, how can you support students crafting those initial ideas, developing those ideas, revising those ideas, maybe using books to get ideas, maybe as mentor texts, right? Saying, oh, that author did it that way. I could use that in my story. Right? Um, and again, finally publishing and sharing their work. Right? So we see how all of this can fit into a, a process. One of the other things that can be fun to do with children's literature is to read books that are actually about the reading process or about the writing process. Um, so what do I mean? Well, there's books like Dear Mr. Blueberry. Um, my students in DC read this book and they loved it. They wanted to write um, letters all the time after they read this book. So this book has fond memories for me. It makes me think of my former students. Um, so this book is written as, as some others are um, in letters, right? And so you can read this book in connection with um, a writing process activity, right? So what does it take to write a letter? How do we prepare? How do we revise? Or you can um, just read it to sort of think about uh, that process. Um, other books that highlight uh, the process of reading and writing, two of my favorites, um, Diary of a Worm, there's also Diary of a Spider, and then Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type, um, about the power of writing. Because, you know, we don't do all of this reading and writing just because we should or just because someone told us to, or just because it's what the next chapter in the book is. But we do it because reading and writing is powerful. And one of the things, when we teach reading and writing as a process, one of the things that's really great about that approach is that we're letting students be readers and be writers, right? So we're not just learning about something. We're not just thinking about, oh, some other authors do that, or that's how books work, but they're far away from us. We get to be readers, and we get to be writers, and students get to be readers, and students get to be writers, in really active and authentic ways, right? We're coming back to our uh, keywords for this course. Um, and so I love this story because it's funny and because it highlights um, some of the power that writing can have. So I'm going to read this to us and then 
um, send you on your way for module three. Farmer Brown has a problem. His cows like to type. All day long he hears click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo. At first he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type? Impossible. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. Advocating for themselves, I love it. It was bad enough the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets. No way, said Farmer Brown, no electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. Sorry, we're closed. No milk today. No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Oh, sorry. The next day, he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a note on the barn door. That's what they do. Closed, no milk, no eggs. No eggs, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard them. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Cows that tie pens on strike, who ever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. Farmer Brown got out his own typewriter. It's almost like they're doing a dialogue journal now. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. Right. Duck was a neutral party, so he brought the ultimatum to the cows. Ooh, big word, ultimatum. That's a good one. And there's Duck. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to snoop, but none of them could understand moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. Duck knocked on the door early the next morning. He handed Farmer Brown a note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Is that what you thought was going to happen? Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and waited for Duck to come with the typewriter. The next morning, he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We'd like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack, quack, click, clack, quack, clickety, clack, quack. There's the ducks. So a little bit of a reminder about why we care about this, why we want students to be able to express themselves, to think deeply about what they're doing, to work on writing, to communicate with real audiences. Um, to have opinions on their writing, opinions on their reading, um, to be able to respond in, again, authentic ways. Um, and I think that this book is just a good example, um, one of many, and there's others are cited in your, um, in your Tompkins text, um, but it really highlight the power of writing um, and the power of written language to um, help us interact with the world. So I hope you're thinking about those things as you do your reading, as you do your synthesis, and as you do your discussion board. So enjoy module three. I'll see you on the discussion boards.